Are you hosting a gathering with family and friends this Thanksgiving and can use a few helpful tips? Well, whether you're planning an in-person event or virtual, I've got you covered with these quick tips to a stress-free Thanksgiving. Welcome to the Planners on Purpose podcast, a resource that empowers you as an event planner or professional to live your life on purpose. I'm Naomi Tucker and your host today. A big shout out to those of you that join me here each and every week and a very special warm welcome to those of you that are first time listeners. I'm so happy to have you here. Now, if you're an event planner or in the event industry, you know that we're always juggling all the responsibilities of work and life. And if that is you, then you are in the right place. This podcast is designed to help empower you with tips and tools and encouragement for you to make the next best step while you're balancing all of the crazy. So I encourage you to go ahead and subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out on any of the exciting episodes that are on the horizon. Now, I wanted to thank everyone that joined me for book club this past week. It was a wonderful discussion. We discussed Elizabeth Magic's book, Big Magic, very fun. And if you missed that and are looking for the opportunity to join us again next time, our new book is Presence by Amy Cuddy, and we'll be getting together on December 30th to discuss that book. This book is all about bringing your boldest and self to biggest challenges. And I really feel that we shouldn't go into 2021 in the same way. We've been through a lot this year. We're going to elevate our game show up bigger and stronger in the new year. So this is a wonderful opportunity to be able to invest in yourself with this delightful read. So I am very excited for this book. I can't wait to see you all at the book club on December 30th. There will be a link in the description to be able to guide you to uh, sign up where you can go ahead and get notifications for this event. Um, And in those notifications, you'll get some insights as I'm reading them, um, some information to prepare you for the discussing the discussion. And it's really a nice little touch point for me to stay in contact with you up until the event. So again, excited about that book, Presence by Amy Cuddy. We'll be discussing that on December 30th and looking forward to seeing you there. Now today, I wanted to give you some quick tips to a stress-free Thanksgiving to those of you that are celebrating Thanksgiving Day, or maybe you will find yourself hosting on this day. Now I realize not all of you will be celebrating this year. Thanksgiving is a U.S. holiday, but I trust that those of you that are abroad can gain some helpful tips too as you plan for your holidays and gatherings with family and friends. My first tip for you is to have a plan for your gathering. Now, I know I'm talking to a bunch of planners, right? But I also know that sometimes we plan so much in our lives and we're inundated with all of the planning that we have to do for our clients and our events. We tend to wing a lot of things when it comes to our personal lives. Now, if you find yourself in that position, you may want to do a little bit more planning as it relates to your personal gatherings this year. So here are a few things to take into consideration. The first one is who will be in attendance, or how many people will be at your gathering. I know this seems pretty basic, but in certain areas, that is very important, especially when there's so many different regulations that are happening in different countries, in different states, on how many people can meet. I know that in certain states, it's how many people in one household can meet, or if you have someone from outside of your household that they recommend that you don't meet. So definitely have that in mind when you're planning for your gathering and know what those regulations are in your states. Now, the second thing is I know that food and decor is important and activities are important. You definitely want to make sure that you're doing those things for your event. But I wanted to draw some attention to some other highlights as well. Location. So if you're having your event indoors or outdoors, If you're in a location where you have favorable weather, you might want to consider having your 
event outside. That would just help you be in an open, more open environment and people are more comfortable with it so that, um, so that you're out in nature and there's less risk with spread. So that is a consideration. If you find yourself that you have to be indoors, perhaps do little things like open up the windows to allow air to come through. Um, some people have different filters in their home, make those visible and available so that people see that you're paying attention to the circulation of the air and that's helping reduce risk. One of the other things I would call to attention here is safety. So we talked a little bit about the location and how that can help with safety. We wanna also take a look at, in terms of safety with masks, if you're needing, if you're going to highly recommend or mandate mask at your gathering, and when do they put mask on? Is it going to be um, for anything but eating? Those are some things that your guests would need to know. Additionally, having hand sanitizer and, um, and cleansing soap available in different restrooms. Also, just having it readily available um, everywhere before people eat and um, anywhere that <laughs> there's, a, there's a spot, you probably want to make sure that you're having some hand sanitizer there. Again, it's not only having it and making it available to everyone, but it's also ensuring that everyone knows that you're safe, that you're putting safety at the top of their minds. The last one is cleanliness. Just making sure that the space in which you're having your event and your gathering is clean, whether it be your home, whether it be um, at another venue. Now, the other two things I wanted to pay attention, wanted you to pay attention to is social distancing when it comes to safety. Will you be practicing social distancing at your event? How does that look, right? How does that look when people sit around the, the dining table? Will they be spaced out more? Perhaps people are in different rooms. Uh, definitely take that into consideration. Your guests are looking, they're wanting to know how this is going to be safe, but then also they can be there to see each other. And then finally, in terms of creating your plan, make sure that you have a plan for communicating to everyone to ensure their safety. Um, people really thrive on certainty during this time. Our brains are just wired to have more, uh, less stress when we are certain in what's going to be taking place. So give that gift of less stress to your attendees as well, to your family, to let them know, here's how you're going to be managing it. Here's the precautions that you're putting in place to ensure that everyone has a safe holiday um, and over communicate because you want to make sure that they know what to expect. That is going to be at their top of mind when they're coming into your home or to your venue. So that was my first tip, which is make sure that you have your plan. My next tip is to consider an alternative meeting location. So perhaps you want to unite others that aren't able to make it to your in-person gathering, or maybe you're just not ready to have people over your home and you want to have everyone come to a virtual platform for Thanksgiving. Then this is what I mentioned on having an alternative meeting location. So why not try out a virtual platform? Now, there are several platforms to choose from. I know there's Google Hangouts, there's WebEx, and there's, uh, you know, even free apps like House Party, and then there's Zoom. I would highly suggest Zoom. It's what I use personally. They're not paying me to say this, but it really is truly a great platform, and they have a wonderful offering for Thanksgiving Day if anyone wanted to have a virtual gathering um, online. So zoom is saying hey you can use our platform and it will be for free you can have as many touch points as you want for your thanksgiving and it will be free to you normally they only have two touch points and it's 40 minutes up to 40 minutes um, time time maximum so this is really awesome, right? You can meet for as long as you want and it will be free. So for those of you that don't know that already, that might be an opportunity for you to be able to meet, um, meet online. 
And when you're meeting online, there are just a few things that I want to call your attention to. The first thing is, again, have a time time frame in terms of when you'll be hopping on that Zoom. It can be really hectic, probably managing your own personal dinner, but then also figuring out the Zoom call and when it's going to happen. Just pick a specific time where you'll have that call and um, just don't have it be too long. Give enough time for everyone to be able to speak and see each other and engage and then wrap it up so that you can get on to the in-person um, portion of the event. Now I know that certain people like to have open-ended Zooms and I know I've heard of people saying, hey, we're going to be eating together on Zoom. You totally can can, can do that too. It is your gathering, your event. Design it how you, be, how you would like, but definitely consider having a platform so that you can free yourself of the stress of ensuring that everyone can come to your event. Open it up, use the platform, and have fun. So also, I would suggest having a moderator, having someone there to ensure that people are either being muted when they need to be muted if there's a lot of background noise happening, also managing the chat to make sure um, if there's any questions or if there's any suggestions that are being made in the chat, monitoring that. If you have any polls that you're planning on doing, you would need someone to be able to launch those and share results. If you're going to be sharing your screen, perhaps you're sharing a YouTube video or any music, um, you want to make sure that that person knows what they're doing when they're sharing that and making sure they're enabling the sound for the computer to come through the app. And then also just making sure that you stay on relatively on your agenda, on your time. If you're just having your call for maybe two hours or one hour, making sure there's a flow to it, that there's a there's a rhyme and a reason. Uh, maybe you're opening up and getting updates from the family and then perhaps turning it over and doing an activity and um, having more discussion before you end the call. Just something as loose as that would be what I would suggest for you so that you know how it's going because otherwise those calls with family can get a little painful if everyone's just speaking over everyone and trying to trying to ch take you know the conversation wherever it goes so definitely have a plan for that so that is my number two suggestion which is consider an alter alternative meeting location or virtual platform my next tip for you is to plan ahead Get started early on it, much of your preparations for Thanksgiving. It can be very tempting to be able to wait until Thanksgiving Day and be wrapped up into the moment, but you will do yourself a good deed if you just try to do a few of these things ahead of time. So if you're doing an in-person event or in-person gathering, perhaps you want to get all of your utensils and your decor and you know your napkins and those type of items maybe you get your furniture laid out to where it needs to be so those are just a few things that you can work out in terms of your virtual experience that you're putting on perhaps you want to familiarize yourself with your platform understand if you can mute or not mute people how to share your screen those things bring you lots of stress on the day of. So if you do know how to do them, you want to make sure that you are just practicing ahead of time so you can help others on the day of, plus know exactly how you're going to be facilitating that virtual um, platform as well. Um, so also you can do different catering options and making sure you're doing that ahead of time. So if you're planning on doing lots of baking, perhaps you want to do some of that ahead of time versus the day of. Um, all of these things wrapped together will help you be, have less stress because you've planned ahead and things that you can do in advance, you do in advance. In addition to that, I want to also tell you a little mini tip here is to ask for help. Be gracious, ask for help, allow others to participate into the day. So many of these items you don't have to do on your own. If you have kids, if you have a partner or a spouse, they also can help you bring your day to flourishing or bring Thanksgiving to flourishing. It's supposed to be about family, right? So bring it all together. Um, 
have people help you on the day of the event. If you have people coming in person, ensure that they're able to help you as well. Maybe pick a couple of people that can ensure that people are being safe and perhaps you can do some other things. Sorry, my phone, my computer went off for a little, a little, for a little bit. Um, additionally, make sure that you have um, someone that is helping you on the virtual platform. That's a awesome opportunity for someone to come in and help you as well. So I would just say people can come in and help mute others or help moderate and keep things on track. Perhaps they share their screen. Um, you can tag team these things with others, spreading the responsibility and allowing yourself to be able to breathe and have a more stress-free holiday. So that's my tip. Plan ahead and get a little bit of extra help. Now my next tip for you is to be cautious. I know we talked about being safe and taking the proper safety measures for your gathering, but also it helps if you are maintaining a sense of cautiousness from the beginning to the end of your event. What typically ends up happening is once people have food, once they have a beverage, once they see that things are safe, they end up letting their guard down Perhaps they're not six feet anymore. Perhaps they're at normal distance from each other, um, or they're they're laughing and you know hugging and and kissing and everything. And although those things are very endearing and it's um, awesome to be able to um, be with your family and be loving and really uh, be in everybody's company, it's still very important that you maintain that sense of cautiousness. Now. When I talk about having a stress-free Thanksgiving, being cautious is really only helping you to ensure that you're maintaining a sense of security and maintaining a sense of um, a sense of safety for everyone that's at your event. And in return, what happens is they are safe, and um, there's not that much, there's not any spread. And making sure that you are uh, communicating with them always throughout that event will help and help you keep safe and really take that stress off of yourself. So make sure that you are being cautious. My last tip for you is find ways to surprise and delight your guests. Now, we're not seeing our family and friends a lot this season, right? So it's just important to take advantage of if they are with you and gathering in person, find ways to really surprise and delight them. So what I mean by this is perhaps you plan for some memorable, memorable games and memorable moments to happen within your gathering. Perhaps you purchase special gifts, a memento for them to take away with them as they leave your home. Perhaps you just have different ways to highlight uh, those in your family that really want need need that special attention. Perhaps it's a it's an elderly loved one that you may have. If you're planning a virtual meeting or a virtual gathering, there are ways for you to surprise and delight your guests there as well. First thing you can do is maybe play some play some different games online. Uh, find ways to allow them to talk and to shine also with the conversation that you're doing. Um, if you had time to, I know this is coming out a little later, but some people are ma mailing little um, gift boxes to each of their loved ones to say, I know you are missing out. I know we're having things virtual, but here are a few mementos or a few special things for your household um, for this Thanksgiving. So that's always fun too. And getting back to the virtual games, plan ahead on those. I know we talked about planning ahead. It's always nice to have games that are able to accommodate everyone. Sometimes on those calls, it's really hard for um, those who are elderly to either hear or to participate. It needs to be easy for them. Also for the younger children, sometimes their attention span isn't <laughs> like adults. So finding different games that are simple enough that everyone can participate and that are quick enough that you don't lose attention. So that is a suggestion for you. Now my family, uh, every single 
Sunday. Since the pandemic hit, we've been getting together on Zoom. We have a virtual event that we do, and it's different every single time that we do it, but it has been something that I've been looking forward to every every Sunday. Um, so we did bingo last year last week and it was really fun it was my first time doing bingo and I participated right on my phone and my kids had a printout of their cards and they were able to also join in the fun and there were prizes for the winners so those are just some simple things that you can do to be able to make sure that you are surprising and delighting your guests so being a host can be tough stuff, I know it. And we're event planners, so we do this for a living every single day. We know how this can be a little stressful. But sometimes the added element of family makes things a little bit more overbearing. So make sure to take care of yourself before and after Thanksgiving. Make sure you're getting really good rest. Make sure you're drinking lots of water. Making sure that you're doing all of those things that help you feel whole. and then you have that energy to be able to give out on Thanksgiving. I want you to keep in the top of your mind just something that really grounds you that you can think about during the day, during Thanksgiving day, to say, oh man, I can't wait until I'm done because I will either put my feet up and relax or perhaps I'll go out on a walk or perhaps I'll have that extra slice of pie by the fireplace Whatever it is, have that at the top of your mind. What's going to be your reward for getting all of this done? I really commend you for taking it on, for being that highlight in your family to, um, to host and to get everybody together. We know that it isn't easy, right? So all of these tips are meant for you to have a stress-free Thanksgiving, help you plan ahead, help you consider safety, help you to ensure that your guests are taken care of and they're um, engaged and they're delighted and surprised. All of them help you make sure that you can take that deep breath and to feel that solace of that everything is going to be okay. So I really commend you. I am looking forward to hearing how your Thanksgivings went. And if you really want this in a little checklist to say, oh, those are some really good tips that Naomi had, well, fear not, I do have a quick Thanksgiving Day stress-free quick tips checklist that you can go and get on the website at the notes for this episode. So visit my website and you'll be able to get that checklist to be able to help you with all of the things that you need to do. So I really enjoyed bringing this episode to you. I hope that you enjoyed it too. Please go ahead and ensure that you're subscribing so that you get notifications next time that I go live with an episode. And then please, if you really enjoyed it, high five me on the way out by giving me a five star rating. I would love that. And leave some comments on um, how much you enjoyed it. That would be amazing. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday and we look forward or I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.